Okay, today we're going to talk about this steam-powered robot that I made back in 1980. And uh, kind of turn it here so you can see all sides. Got a, a boiler. The stack is actually the stack for the fire. The fire goes in this little hole here. This is the exhaust for the uh, steam. Uh, it's a single piston flywheel over on this side. Uh, steam exhaust there, as we just talked about in the gearbox to gear everything down. It's located there. Aluminum and brass mostly. Um, you know what I'm thinking? I'm going to pull these screws, because if I remember right, I mean this was has been over 35 years, but if I remember right, this is a, this will get us in so you can see what's what's going on, more or less. These are uh, brass nuts, so they shouldn't corrode. Now, I could be wrong. This may not be the way to get in to see what's going on. I just remember it that way. I know the hose will be connected up to that steam output, so that will will keep it from uh, dropping all the way off. There we go. Let me get some more light. Let's get, uh, does that help? So over here, this, um, here's the piston. Here's the flywheel. You can see the piston moving there. And this is part of an old history sink clock motor. I'm using it just for the gearbox. It's connected to the flywheel. And the output side of that is driving this pinion gear and this, then this large gear which is actually becomes the cam for the uh, leg walking linkage. Okay? Okay. So at this point I think we need to put this back on. And the first thing we'll need to do is to put uh, some water in the boiler because you never want to put a fire to any steam engine boiler unless it has water in it because you'll ruin it. Especially on these little uh, hobby type steam engines because the boilers you make and solder together and uh, the fire will just melt the solder. Of course if there's water in there it's not going to get over a uh, boiling temperature and so it won't melt the solder. So you do have to you have to make sure you keep some water in your boilers. I don't know that it's important that I put these nuts on right now since they're fighting me. Or at least that one was fighting me. I might as well. This will be a, a long video, so there will be points where you can fast forward. Maybe when it's all done down in the bottom of the description box, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put some times that you can shoot to. For example, this would be the description part, and then there'll be the filling it up with water and fire. And so let's get on with that. First, we take the head off, the stack. As you can see it actually is a stack that goes all the way through the top of the head. But right here on uh, on top, there is a uh, brass cap that you remove, and that's how you get the water into the boiler. I've got a little funnel. I don't remember how much water I put in there, but I do... I don't... I mean, the boiler doesn't go all the way down. You want enough to run it, but you don't want more than you need, because it'll just take longer for it to, uh, to boil. And who wants to wait forever for it to boil? I think I should put some more in. You think that's enough? I'll put a little bit more in. Ooh, that was too much. It's overflowing. So now we know. Okay. Too much. Try soaking it up with a towel here. So this may take forever to uh, reach a boil. Or it might 
might not reach a boil at all. I think I should try and dump some of that out. If it'll dump out. See, it may not. Alright. I can always run it with the, uh, the cap off and let it steam out the vent and then put the cap on. So, we've got water in there. Then the next thing you need is your fuel. In most of these little steam engines you have your mammoth fuel, which is like an old sterno pill, tablets. Actually, here's one of them right here. And uh, these are almost 40 years old. Because I don't think they were new when I had them 35 years ago. <laughs> I think I had them laying around from something else. And uh, slide a corner of it. The question is, is, can I get it in there? Normally there's a tray that you slide these in. In the case of this one, I have a, a platform that it's sitting on. Hopefully that'll be good enough. Okay, so we've got, we've got fire, we've got water. And uh, we've got heat coming out of the stack. And see, I didn't really want water coming out, so I didn't want to fill it up too much. Oh, you can see the uh, bubble later. It's already starting to bubble up a storm there. Let's get the stack on. Or it gets too hot to uh, to do that, you know. And so I don't uh, don't stink up the house. Let's turn this exhaust fan on. It'll add a little bit of noise, but uh, it'll keep me from getting yelled at. So we got to wait for enough steam to start build up that it uh, that it can flip the. Trying to remember where it is that I flip. Getting some uh, water out, so it tells me I did fill the uh, the boiler too full. was a mistake on my part. But I didn't have it written down and it's been, it's been 35 years. You just don't remember this stuff. I actually had built uh, several steam robots. The other one that I built instead of using a piston and a flywheel was a, uh, a turbine. And it was much more efficient. It was a much faster walker and there's less moving parts because you just have a turbine spinning your gearbox. I can't really reach the flywheel itself. What I'm reaching is the connecting point between the two. I'm trying to work the water out is what I'm doing right now while it's getting hot. Waiting for enough steam to build up. I don't know if it'll be able to build up enough steam as long as the Boiler's too full. Worst come to worst, I'll start the video again. Dump some of the water out. However, it uh, does take time to build up a head of steam. We think at least five minutes. You see the old bubbleator there? Let me move the camera by hand. Hang on, everybody. see we've got we've got action happening we've got heat coming out we've got fire in the box and uh, we're waiting we're waiting for enough steam pressure to generate he's dripping so it's uh, it's building up steam pressure I'll get back there and uh, spin the flywheel some more Am I back far enough? I better go back some extra. Get 
sure wish I'd put less water in there. Right now I'm just pumping hot water. Pretty good too, spraying, spraying a pretty good amount of hot water out. Starting to get a little bit of steam mixed with the hot water. guess is that it would have taken about five minutes. I don't know that we've been I don't know that we've been having fire under the boiler for that long yet. As the camera say. Well maybe up to the eleven minute mark. Now I know I spent some time just talking at the beginning. Normally you hear the bubbling in the in the boiler. Ah, there we go. Starting to sound promising. That's steam. Okay, it's starting to getting ready to run here. It's, uh, so it's a normal shuffle walker with ratchet wheels in the feet. Uh oh, here we go. Starting to crank up. No, it's not going to win any races. It's still pumping a lot of water. <laughs> I think it's going to have to clear that water out before we can get pure steam coming. What I should do, I should go mobile with the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. See all this water coming out? Because I put way too much water in the uh, boiler. Just gotta blow that water out of there. However, it is uh, it is walking. Just just as no matter how bad I try to screw it up, it uh, is managing to overcome it. Obviously, it would rub up quite a bit more if it wasn't shooting so much water out. <laughs> See, the uh, steam pipe comes out of the top of the, uh, the boiler here and then down, but the problem here is the steam pipe is like full of water. Let's, uh, let's back this menagerie up. Wow, spraying that hot, steamy water everywhere. You see that? If I backlight it, is that better? Front light it? hand in there. Well, I'm making quite the mess. But you're seeing a steam-powered robot which is quite large, quite heavy, all metal, made in the 1980s, actually uh, walk. And uh, I'm glad I did it where I've been doing it. It's, it's going to be easier to clean the stove top up than it would be if I'd done this out in the hut. Ooh, look at it now. It's really starting to go almost all steam, spraying less water. Like I say, it's not going to win a race. But when you have one little uh, piston and a flywheel, you got to gear it down some. Now the, uh, the one that I had built that used the turbine blades walked about twice as fast as this, but it also went through its uh, boiler full of steam twice as fast because it was just blowing it through as that turbine really revved out. And okay. I think I'm blowing the sterno out. I think we're gonna call that good. So there you have it, my steam-powered robot from the 1980s being run in uh, 2022.
think I've, nope, I haven't run it since I built it. So this is, this would be the second time <laughs> I've ever, uh, well, I probably ran it a dozen times when I first built it, but the uh, second time that I actually remember doing a full run, and back then I would videotape everything, and I do have videotapes of all my old projects. The problem with that is they're buried in a storage unit with uh, several other families worth of stuff in front and on top of them. I can't get to the tapes. If I could get to the tapes, I could show you guys some really cool things. But this will have to do the old steam-powered robot.